How you doing, Reverend Washington? All right, Don, good morning. I'm sorry, good evening. How's everybody? Hey, hey Reverend, how you doing? Hey, how's everybody? Good morning, Pastor. All right. Very good, very good. Seeing Stephen Scott at the top, I'm not doing too good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty disturbed tonight, sir. You got a, you got a beef with that? Oh, yeah, we got to have to do something about that, Rudy. Hey, Rudy, how's it going? <laughs> hey, y'all. Bro, 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 Washington. How you doing, Rudy? Hey, bro, what's up, brother? What's going on? <laughs> what, what happened to Atlanta yesterday? How you doing, Kimball? How you, you doing, doing brother? Dallas. Simmons? Question. <laughs> Man, Atlanta, let me down yesterday. It was my upset game. Dallas weaseled. We weaseled the win, but we still won because we weaseled that one. <laughs> that, was, that was my upset game of the week. I haven't had a single Dallas game that I will remember like I remember that one. That was a great moment. <laughs> oh, my God. Atlanta gave him that game. Oh, most definitely, bro. The onside kick was crazy. I'm like, why are they watching this ball that's spin around? Like, like college and high school football. Like, you just got to know that. Yeah. That's, that's a... <laughs> and they cool. called a timeout before the end, too, to discuss it. Jerry Jones must have paid somebody, but he all oh, <laughs> <you know, laughs> hey, Atlanta, hey. if they fire their coach, I will understand it. It would definitely be understandable. <laughs> yep. Well, hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, we want to wait about maybe two more minutes or so, Othello, and we get it started. But uh, hopefully everybody, again, is, is uh, feeling good and safe and comfortable. I think the weather's changing, but far as I can see, it's not that bad yet. But but I haven't seen the news either, so. <laughs> it's just a little Texas rain. That's all it is. Right. Well, just a little Texas rain, you know. <laughs> yeah, just a little Texas rain. Hey, Brother Simmons. Hey, well, hey, how you doing, Othello? All right. You mind bringing in the scripture? Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Othello, before we do that, I need to ask Dopes. Dopes, where are you at? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I don't, I don't even see it on the list. See what on the list. You know what I'm talking about. What is you your don't name? need to see my name on the list. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, hey, uh, <laughs> Reverend Watson, the one that I came see. out with, with some pics this week. <laughs> I see some, I see a 28, I see some 26s, some 24s. <laughs> then way down there, I see some. I don't understand how, how you only have 15 after two weeks. Man, you're crazy. You better ask me. <laughs> You better ask him. I ask him. He, he the bookkeeper. He know what's going on. Yeah. It may be an honest omission. Digging Scott, uh, he's up because I'm down there at the bottom now. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do, Ross Scott? I got I got 14 with the win tonight, so I'm still in first. I'm still in first all by myself. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we coming Bro, after you. Russell got 14 with the win tonight also. No, he actually has 15. He don't have 15, but he's still behind. No, he don't have no 15. Yeah, he will. I think so. Yeah, he has 15. He does? Yeah. I we had the same picks and stuff for the Dallas game. I guess since I don't have those big old telephone like you, I, I can't get all the information that you all have. <laughs> but I'm going to use my flip phone to tell you this. Hey, hey well, if you ain't got no phone like them, dude, here's what I would do. Stop jumping out there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Brent, I'm I'm flipping. I'm gonna flip till they quit. Hey, you gonna flip till they change? Just keep flipping. Don't hey, worry about them. Uh, like I told Pastor, he asked me, "When you gonna get around the phone?" I said, "Can you hear me when I talk?" <laughs> yeah, well, that's all you need. <laughs> okay. Hey, brothers, it's good to hear your voices. Deacon Irvin Johnson and other brothers. Glad to see you. I see Sam. Uh, everybody, Othello, go ahead and get us started, sir, and uh, we will we will do our devotion and get to our little breakout session stuff today, and we'll be done. All right. Yeah, evening, brothers. Good evening. Uh, brothers, Deacon Simmons will bring our scripture, and I'll bring our prayer. Okay, good evening, brothers. Good evening. The scripture reading may come from Matthew 6, verses 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us pray, brothers. Uh, gracious God, our Father, we come again just to say thank you. Thank you for your manifold blessings. 
Thank you for looking beyond our faults and tending to every man's on this line's needs. God, we thank you for the hedge around every home on this line. We uh, have not been protecting ourselves this past week. You've been keeping us. You've been protecting us. You've been keeping your love around, loving arms around that. And for that, we're so grateful. We thank you, God, for this kingdom man's ministry. Thank you that it gives us something to look forward to in the midst of this uh, health crisis that we all face. Thank you that uh, it is well, though, God, with our souls. Mm -hmm. As much as there are tests going on, there still are many things to be grateful for. We, uh, First of all, God, we thank you because you're great and uh, have done many great things. For some of us, you've healed our bodies. Some of us, you've uh, put us through school. Some of us, you've given us homes. You've just done been all in all. And for that, God, we're so grateful. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us on the cross and paid for us something we can never repay. But we can live lives, God, up to the kingdom man's standard to give him the glory. God, before we go any further, we confess that we've fallen short. We've missed the yeah. mark. We ask you to clean us up. We ask you to give us another chance. God, we're excited about the kingdom man's ministry. Help us to be lit on fire mm -hmm. as much as we are Sunday on Mondays also to tell the world that there is a better way for the men of this world. Thank you for Reverend Washington, God. Thank you for all he's done and poured into this ministry. God, with all the responsibility he has, all the delegations he has within his own family, he still finds time to teach them in and uh, delegate responsibilities to the capable other leaders we have within, the Brother Wares, the Deacon Scotts, uh, the Deacon Johnsons. For that, God, we're so grateful. But finally, God, we ask that you challenge some man tonight, to give us a challenge to be better to retain some of this information that we hear. And it's okay, God, for us to feel good on Monday, but help us live better on Tuesday, and walk better on Wednesday, and just be all that you call us to be. Uh, let's uh, forget, God, thank you for our pastor. Thank yeah. you for all these pouring out in the midst of this pandemic. We, we bless him, we, we bless his father, we bless his uh, family, we bless his going out and coming in and just continue to keep your loving arms around him. Again, God, we're excited about this Kingdom Man's ministry. We pray a man tonight uh, just is excited and bursting at the seams to, to get more engaged in what you're speaking to us in, in our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name for all our sakes. Amen. 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 Thank you again. Uh, good evening, brothers. Glad to see all of you all here with us. Uh, hopefully, you've been benefiting from our time together. Some of you, again, uh, we're just, just glad, to, glad to have you all participate in what we're trying to do. Uh, Tonight, uh, my, my segment again is uh, these things you should know or we should know, get to know, uh, moving from the ledge to solid ground. That's what we've been talking about and we're just about done. Today is probably the last day. So I've come up with some questions because we don't want to just talk. We do want to come up with some practical solutions and real answers to some of these things. We've been talking about the, hold on a second, we've been talking about what should we do to preserve our legacy in a, in a nutshell? That's by uh, the simplest way to put it. But if we don't prioritize our sacred history, if we don't, sacred, if we don't prioritize our faith and pass it down, then we do damage to our future. We do damage to, our, to our, our faith movement, if you will. And that's what we've been trying to heighten in our, our, break, our uh, discussions during this first 30 minutes of our time. So today I'm gonna try to improve a little bit I've passed out these questions to a few people. I'm going to break you up into groups again. And that's all I want you to talk about is one question, one of the questions. Let me give you an overview. The first question is, how, how can Lily Grove identify and inventory what we now have that is worth preserving? That's the first question. How do we, what, I'm sorry, what do we now have that's worth preserving? That's the first question. The second discussion question is handle how do we handle what we have as if it's worth preserving? That's the second thing. The third thing, how do we identify and recruit suitors who will receive and honorably maintain the legacy? And then third, fourthly, create opportunity. How do we create opportunities to sell to those who are willing to buy some of right now part some of our right now partnerships? In other words, how do we get that going right now? So those are the four general areas that I want you to use in your breakout session. Obviously, number one is group one. Number two is group two. Number three is group three. So I'm going to try to break us up again. But everybody, in whatever area you, you, we break you up in, we break you up in, uh, that's the question. That, I mean, that's the group you're going to be in, okay? So that's what I'm going to try to do and get right this time. I didn't get it right last time, but I'm going to break you up into four groups. And 
we're gonna break you up right about now. Okay, so hold on a second. Praise the rooms. Okay, group one. Uh, Willis, do you have a copy of the questions I gave you? Deacon Robinson. Yeah, I have a copy. Of it. Very good. In group two, Paul, I mean, Don Kimball, do you have a copy? Don. No, I don't have a copy. I emailed it to you, so you didn't see email then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Group three. Brother, where did I send you a copy? Uh, no. I didn't. Okay. Uh, at least I didn't, I didn't notice. That's okay. Daryl, do you have one? Do you have a copy? Daryl Brighton? Yes, I have okay. I'm going to move you to group two then, okay? All right. Okay, you're going to be in group two. So let me find somebody for group three. Don, you haven't checked your email? I'm looking at looking now. Okay. Well, I'm going to trust you're going to find me. I'm going to move you to group three. <coughs> and I'm going to send it to you, Brother Scott, because I think you have that savvy. You can, you can, I don't see. Othello, where are you? Pastor, I have, I have it up now. I have, uh, I have the questions up now. Very so good, very good. Okay, so Scott, you're in group two. So Daryl will put you back to group three, okay? Okay. You okay. sent it today? Yeah. Will is you in group one? Uh, group two is Stephen Scott, group three, Daryl Brightman, and I need, I'll go to group four then. That's fine. I'll help group four. Okay. All right, everybody, I'm going to try to do this one good time. And let's pray that the Lord is kind today. Are y'all ready? Here we go. I'm going to open the rooms now, and we're going to take 10 minutes to discuss the, the, the number that you have, okay? And I'm going to go to group four. Okay. Okay. Uh, to group two. Sign to Okay, I'm in group four. Who's with me? Let's see, group one. Got it. Okay. All right, group four. Our question is a hard one. Okay, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can you wave or something so I can see that y'all hear me? Okay. Dokes, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, good, good. I didn't know what group I was in. Okay, you're in group four. Well, you're supposed to be in group one, but you're going to group four, so I'm going to move you to group. You, you're fine. Just stay where you are. Okay, here we go. Our topic is how do we as a church create opportunities so we can sell this preservation of our legacies? You know what I mean? How do we, how do, we do that is the question. That's the question we're going to deal with. Okay, I see Tate. Are you in a group? Oh, y'all, y'all unassigned. Hold on a second. I'm getting it together. Hold on. Okay. Four. Are y'all there? Yes, sir. Great. Othello, I sent you the questions. Do you have them? Yes, sir. I got them. Okay, will you all start your discussion so I can make sure other people are doing what they're supposed to do. Your question is number four, creating, op how do we create opportunities to sell to those who will buy what we're trying to sell? In other words, trying to get the older group to sell what they have to the younger group to make these opportunities beneficial for us. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So that's, that's y'all discussion. Uh, at least we're just talking about passing legacy over to the next generation without it hitting the ground, trying to keep it from Falling on the ground. Got it? All right. Okay. Somebody hey, had to talk. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Look at young men who are dedicated and involved in certain ministries in the church and, in, and showing spiritual leadership and develop those come along and kind of take up the torch uh, as we kind of fade to the side. But we need to make sure that we pass the knowledge on to them that we have and uh, and the legacy that Little Grove have, and so they know which direction to go. And what, what Little Grove is already. Did everybody get that? Or uh, did 
Do you all have? This is group two, Brother Scott? Yeah, group two. Okay, how do we handle what we have as if it's worth preserving? That's what we're asking. How do, is that what you have, Brother Scott? That's what I have. Okay, yeah. okay. You guys got it. Go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brother Scott, I, I think I think we should uh, do it sort of like we do uh, our church school. We continue on. Uh, we start them off when they're young, and as they mature, we move them on to a different classroom, a different, you know, other words when they progress to another level, we move them, you know, until you, you can't go anymore. And that's the same way we should preserve these things as the young kids are coming up that we have. And, and that's going to be our And recruit. Um, to me, everyone um, can be recruited. Uh, it's not a certain look that you would have to have. Um, Anyone that you see, you can, so for us identifying, anyone that you come in contact with should be a, a credible suitor. And if you uh, uh, witness to them or you uh, mentor to them, you know, uh, I think it would be uh, uh, the person that you can. Uh, it's not, you can't rule out anyone, what I'm saying, as a, a suitor. Let, let me ask you um, that I think that I think it needs to start with I, I think the older generation has a has an obligation to um, to start with truth right I mean I think I think what, what we start with is directional you know you need to do this and not saying that they've made some pitfalls too so I think it needs to be based in truth uh, you know for example uh, you, why aren't you in church every Sunday? Well, you know, when you were 22, 23, 24, were you in church every Sunday? You know, so I think we need to allow for that kind of thing. So I think it needs to be that conversation needs to start with truth. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Tate, what you got? I, I think it's a, a responsibility that it's a 50-50 responsibility. Um, when you find somebody young and who's willing to, to accept um, some training. And that really comes from, um, from, the, from, from the elders and from, from the younger person. Um, I grew up with um, a bunch of uncles. I mean, like 13 or 14 uncles. You know, and they were all willing to teach me things, but I had to be in a mindset to learn because what they were, if they were teaching good and my mind wasn't there, it, it was a waste of time. And so there has to be, a, it, it, it's a 50-50 relationship. And when you, if you grow up around that kind of stuff, it's easy. Cause I grew up around, I grew up around a lot of uncles and they were always telling me what I was going to do. I mean, they, they, they didn't ask me if I wanted to, they made me do what I need to do. And I appreciate that now. And now I try and, and give younger people the same thing that, that I was given. Hey, if you do it like this, you might get a better outcome. Or would you think about this? Or what about that? Does that make I sense? Say, uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, everybody's saying sort of the same thing. Like, uh, I think Pastor Anderson would be a good example in terms of how he quoted uh, Drake recently in the sermon. Uh, who would think the pastor would say something about a, a rap lyric saying that's his son-in-law? But it was creative to let everyone know, hey, it's not a... Uh, it's not about just one way, but you know, but again, like I want to repeat what uh, brother uh, the coach said. What happened, Eric? Man, I just took a journey on the wild side. I, I ended up in somebody else's meeting. 
I'm Paul? sorry, guys. I tried to put you in different rooms. They, they, y'all must not have accepted the invitation or something. I'm not sure. It may have been my fault, but I tried to put you in different rooms twice, and for some reason it said have not accepted. Oh. So I don't know if it get, and, and I apologize if it gave you a sign or a signal or something like that. I'm not sure. I, I saw it accept and something like that over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, the group is rejoining us. We, everybody should be collapsing in the next 20 seconds. So it's gonna, everybody's gonna return. Okay. So hopefully we got a chance to do a little discussions there somewhere or another. <laughs> so was, well, Reverend Washington, I just joined in. Okay, hey, Brother Owens, how are you? I'm doing fine. Great, great, great. Thank you again. Okay, everybody. Um, it worked a little bit better. I appreciate that. I don't know. Uh, this technology stuff is above me, but we're getting it figured out. Uh, group one, were you able to discuss your lesson, Brother Robinson? Yes, sir. We were able to discuss our lesson. Can you and give me course, about three, three, three points that y'all brought out? Identify. Their question was, everyone, to identify and inventory what we have now that's worth preserving. Can you identify some things we have now that's worth preserving? Yeah, we said that mainly we are Bible-based church, and so it's, it's, it's worth preserving our uh, legacy in terms of how we get the membership involved in teaching and learning how mm -hmm. to move forward. We also mentioned that uh, we need to address the young adults in terms of how to motivate them to really receive what we have to leave behind. We have to figure out how to motivate them. Mm -hmm. And then we mentioned that all of our ministries are good, right? And uh, Brother Charles mentioned that uh, we need to, we ought to look at ways of uh, uh, reaching them right now during this pandemic. The pandemic okay. is, 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 a, is, a, is a mechanism now for us to utilize what we have to share with those who are not quite on board, but they keep coming back. Paul mentioned they keep coming back. There's something that brings you back. You need to figure out what that is. Thank you, Deacon Robinson. Good job. Group two. Uh, how do we handle what we have as if it's worth preserving? Group two, was that the Dick and Scott's group? Unmute brother Scott. Unmute brother Scott. Can't hear you. We can't, we can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry about that. So That's I was going to say, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to start with brother, with what brother Williams uh, said, uh, he spoke last, and, and, and that's Brother Robinson's brother who's uh, uh, go joining us today. But he said that, uh, ironically enough, that he, they're having the same discussion at their church and, and how uh, can they find ways to preserve and pass down um, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, legacy. the, I guess, the legacy and the, the, the talents and the gifts that they have. Um, but he also says uh, sometimes, you know, we fail to pay attention to what we have. And in doing that, we, we, we neglect our responsibility to actually, to actually pass it down. Um, Brother uh, Milton Simmons said that we should uh, employ a, a model like our Sunday school uh, in that we develop and promote and equip our young talent so that we can put them in position to, uh, you know, to move the church forward. Um, brother uh, Johnson, Urban Johnson said, um, we should develop, continue to develop mentor, uh, mentee type programs, um, modeling what our patriarchs at Lily Grove did before us. Uh, he mentioned several brother, brothers who came along before us and, and, and they either did it by purpose or accident, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, they mentored us. And, and they made sure that we were ready to assume certain positions um, by teaching us how to cultivate the talents and the gifts that God has given us. Um, and Brother Brown said we need to recognize who we are and what we are, uh, seeing the talents and gifts God has given us stewardship of, and that'll help us to learn how to handle um, what he's given us um, a, a stewardship of. Great job. Then number three, uh, Brother Brightman, your team, identify and recruit. How do we identify and recruit suitors who will receive and honorably maintain these legacies? 
Um, one of the brothers, uh, Luke, said that uh, we start off, we kind of pitched it around young folks. And, and, and Brother Brent had an opening statement about young folks and making sure that young folks were, it's not always just about bringing in young folks, but also about main, maintaining some of the legacy of the elder too, uh, to make sure that you, know, you bring that cohesiveness between uh, the two groups. Uh, Brother Luke said that uh, the leadership class was one way um, yeah. that could kind of help and start that, that trend. Um, and then also uh, Brother Brent talked about maintaining, it has to be honorable, uh, main, maintaining the legacy, which means that you have to lead by example. Right. Um, also, we define what that legacy was. What, actually, what is it? Is it, is it something that's, that's spiritual? Or is it something more or less in the building of the church? Is it actually the church? Or is it, is it us as, as, as the legacy? And uh, one of the brothers said, this is about true faith and having a certain standard about your faith and your Christian walk. Uh, Don probed the question about are all people uh, suitors? Can, can someone be ruled out? <laughs> and some of the other brothers basically said that, that yes, um, you have to make sure that they have a spirit of service. And Brother West stated that uh, it says first identify then recruit, which means that they have to have some type of integrity. Very good. I'm, I'm loving it. I wish we could go through all these things because there's a lot more there. And I know y'all sick of that. But this is important. I really do think it's important. And then the last group, uh, Brother Othello Isaacs and his gang, uh, create, create op how do we create opportunities to sell to those who will buy into, in other words, buy into the right now partnership? Because some folks figure we'll give it to them on our deathbed. That's what we talked about last week. There's a lot of transferring on deathbed when well, you're going to leave it anyway. But what can we do to get people to partner and buy into it now? Brother Isaac. Yes, sir. Uh, brother uh, Sam, he uh, mentioned that we had uh, that they, people should be willing to be open and engage, mm -hmm. and not just uh, so uh, rigid. Uh, he mm -hmm. also mentioned that younger people need to be shown value in these belief systems. I mean, there's mm -hmm. one thing to say, "Hey, it is what well, it is. What it is." There's another thing to explain, you know, stepwise what those things are. Then we had a uh, coach Holland who mentioned that uh, we have to start with the truth. Sort of the same thing. Just, it, I think. Uh, a barbershop talk ain't gonna help. You know, we gotta just <laughs> stick with some biblical truths in, in terms of what we're putting out here and directional in terms of you're pointing people in a certain way. And then uh, finally we had Brother Tate saying it was, uh, he gave a very practical example seeing how his uncle took time to show him. And uh, that kind of was, uh, if you look at the question, it says, how do we create opportunities? And uh, that was uh, that was willful. It's just, it has to be within your heart to pass this down. If we think it's just gonna stay within us and and grow, that's not really true. Uh, his uncles took time with him and sat with him and showed him certain things. And now he says he does the same thing now. He tries to reach out to people. And uh, just, a, just a good thing to see that brothers know it's about more than just the right now. Very good. I, I, again, gentlemen, I'm gonna pass it over, but in our nation, you're seeing some serious war going on right now. And it's just getting started with some of the things that the two different institutions, one, think that the most important thing about the nation is the nation. You need to preserve the practices, the history, the heritage, and all of those things that, that make the United States what it is. Whereas you got other people think that the cargo or the people in the nation is far more than keeping our seas and our shores and, and our big buildings and all those other things, but they kind of run together. And we live with those same kind of issues in our church where people want to keep the campus, they want to keep the storyline and all that, but but deeper than that is if you don't have any people, you can't you can't maintain anything. And then if you got a whole bunch of buildings and no people, then you got to have that as well. So I guess you need both parties. You need to maintain the, the history, but you need the, the, the you need people who who will who will accept that as well. And so uh, we'll we'll I have I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So I did come up with a real nice list of some things that I think are very, very helpful, but you guys nailed a whole lot of them. I'm gonna email it to you guys tonight so you can at least look at some of the things that I thought were, were important and, and consistent with what you guys said. But I'm gonna surrender my time now. Uh, it's about a minute to seven. So thank you guys so much for making the breakout session work. James Brown will help me. I've been trying to figure out how to 
how to broadcast to every screen at the same time in breakout sessions, but it won't let me do that. So we'll figure that out for another time. At this time, Brother Scott, you we're in your hands, sir. Okay, well, thank you, Pastor Anderson. And I think I'm off, off of mute, mute now. I am. So <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh, thank you, Pastor Anderson. Uh, Pastor Washington, I'm sorry. I uh, um, uh, want to thank Pastor Anderson and, and, and you, Pastor Washington, again for uh, the opportunity for allowing us this, this setting uh, to be able to to come together as brothers and uh, uh, particularly to be able to, to focus on this uh, this particular study. Uh, again, to uh, Brother Ware and Brother Irvin Johnson, Philip Ware and Irvin Johnson, my uh, co-laborers in, in this particular study, and to all you brothers, good evening. Uh, got a lot that I want to try to cover in a very short period of time. Got a lot of questions for you tonight. I know that that we are competing with the New Orleans Saints tonight and I know that there's some Louisiana folk here and they they want to watch those Saints so uh I'm not gonna mind if you raise your eyes a little bit and look at your your monitor to watch the game a little bit but uh you know kind of kind of keep us uh kind of kind of keep us on your mind and and and, and kind of stay engaged because when I ask that question I want you to be able to to jump right in uh we <laughs> left off last Monday night on the hit the street section of our study, which is on page 80, looking at five ways to cultivate internalized integrity. Uh, unfortunately, we were only able to get to two. We're gonna try to get to the other three tonight and, and move into our first Bible study, uh, which is walk securely. Um, so if you would, uh, I want you to uh, be at page uh, 81 uh, in your book, if you have your book, and we're gonna, we gonna, get, we gonna get right to it. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please stop me because I know once I get going, I can get going and I can, I can uh, probably talk too much, but I do have a lot of questions tonight to try to keep, keep you involved. Uh, if I can get someone to read on page 81, uh, the third item, develop regular devotional life, what it says underneath that, that paragraph underneath that. Make spending time with God the rule not the exception. As you see in Daniel's case, cultivating your walk with God throughout the day will do more than anything else to help you become a man of integrity. Thank you, Brother Lucas. Okay, I'm willing to wager that most of us, if not all of us, would be comfortable losing a couple of pounds. In fact, obesity has become a public health crisis in the United States. The medical condition, which, is, which involves having an excessive amount of body fat, is linked to severe chronic disease, including diseases, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and cancer. It causes, get this, it causes one in five deaths in the United States each year, nearly as many as smoking cigarettes. The financial cost of obesity is high as well. The estimated annual medical cost of obesity in the United States was $147 billion in 2008. The medical cost for people who have obesity is $1,429 higher than the normal uh, uh, cost for people with, with, uh, with normal weight. And the fact of the matter is, other than pre-existing medical conditions, we suffer with weight problems because we desire to eat too much too often during the day. However, I would also wager to say that most of us could not get away with eating just one meal a day. Couldn't do it. We cannot get away with eating just one meal a day. That just wouldn't be enough nourishment for the body. But what about nourishment for our spirit and our soul? Here's a question for you. I'm going to jump right into it. I want to start with this question. What makes you think we can just read a scripture and say a short prayer in the morning and be done with it for the day? Why do we have that mindset that if we just if we just read a scripture, if we just say a short prayer, that's all we have to do for the day? As if if we just 
eat a meal in the morning, drink a, drink a cup of tea. We don't have to do anything else for our nourishment for the day. What makes us think we can just read a scripture and say a short prayer in the morning and be done with it for the day? <laughs> good question. That's a good question. Well, mm -hmm. Brother Scott, I'd say we are uh, spiritually anorexia. Mm. I, I really would, because if we were to quantify that with uh, the substance that we put in our bodies, we would die. Mm -hmm. We mm. would die. Mm. Well, that's we're, we're able to get away with it, Stephen. That, that, mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm. It's, it's that's like a good one. When, you, when you eat one meal a day, you don't think about it. You just go on about your business, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't think about it until later on the next one. I didn't eat but one meal yesterday. So we're able to get away with it, and it doesn't really affect us right away. Right. And Brother Scott, I would like to add that uh, when, when you see people on the highway, a lot of times, they may have tires that are almost flat, but they don't know the difference. The sensation, they can't really tell the difference, so they don't know they're in jeopardy. So they're comfortable riding until somebody says, hey, your tires are low. And I think some of it is just the perception that you're okay. It's not, I'm, not in any, I'm not in any apparent danger. It's not a problem until it's a problem. I also think that we, we have a tendency to focus more on our physical well-being and gaining material things than we do our, our spiritual growth. We have a tendency to take it for granted. We, we, we fall back in that old trait where God knows my heart. But are we developing ourselves spiritually when we just, as you say, just take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, instead of uh, focusing and spending time with God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother Scott, um, I'm, I want to go to sports. I, I guess all of us can identify with that. Uh, you see some players who practice, practice, practice the same thing over and over and over. And when the, when, uh, the game comes into play, then you can see their practice. Uh, and then you see guys who just get out there and just go through the motion. They, and I, 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 as a little league coach, I saw it a lot where you got guys who start off and have all the talent in the world and they don't go to the next level because they don't practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you got a guy who don't have the talent and he end up being better than that guy because of his commitment. Mm -hmm. And so I think commitment and dedication, uh, uh, you know, when you just going through the motion, it shows uh, when it's showtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We and need Scott, I'd like to add something to that okay. also. Okay. One thing, uh, I, I feel like life is too soft right now. You know, life in America is not a hard life. You know, if 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 we if we get hungry, we can find us some food. Mm -hmm. We get thirsty, we can find us some water. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, if if things was different, and you'll notice that in people, when things begin to happen in people's lives, they begin to depend more on Christ. Mm -hmm. What if we was in prison? You know, what if another nation had took over this country? Mm -hmm. Lives would be different, mm -hmm. but the way we are now, it's easy. Mm -hmm. We began to stray away from God. Even even now, mm -hmm. uh, if we st stay away from church uh, uh, two or three weeks, pretty soon we'll get so we don't want to go to church. But if pressure was on us, mm -hmm. and see, God has blessed America, and He still is blessing America. Mm -hmm. And and, 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 and see, a lot of times we go astray because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because. Life is easy and it's simple. We mm -hmm. could get what we want. There's we can get most of the things that we, we want. Uh -huh. There's an old, thank you, Brother Owens. There's an old hymnal that we sing, I Need Thee Every Hour. And that's, that's the right. mindset, uh, mm -hmm. brothers, that we, we're going to have to learn how to employ that. I need the constant nourishment of God's word throughout the day just to make it through the day. Yeah. I, I got to have, I got to be in close contact all day long getting the nourishment of God so that I can make it through, through the day. Because really, there's no telling what's going on and what's going to come into your mind and, and what type of urges you're going to get. That's why you have to stay connected to, to God throughout the day. And you can't allow yourself to get into the routine of saying, I'm going to say, I'm going to read a quick, quick scripture. I'm going to say a quick prayer and, and I won't be back again until tomorrow morning. 
right? Right. That 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 that's that's just not going to work. There's a reason why Daniel kept on praying even mm. after he knew the edict was signed by King Darius yeah. because he kept on needing God. Yeah. And the question is, when do we stop? I don't need you to answer this, but I want you to consider this. When do we stop needing God? Never. With, with, just like you, you don't stop needing nourishment from your body, and we right. eat excessively. I mean, we get more nourishment than we need. <laughs> why, can't we, why can't we desire more God? Yeah. You know, why, why can't we be excessive in our nourishment of the word of God? Yeah. So here's, here's going to my next question, and then we're going to move on. Why is it so hard for us to do something so simple? Maybe, maybe it's a continuation of the last question, but I, I, just, want, I just want us to consider it. It's, it. it sounds simple, but why is it so hard for us to do something so simple? Spending time in devotion daily, not just, not, just, not just a couple of minutes, but picking times out during the day where you, where you purposely say, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes with God. I, 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 I'm not just going to do it once, yeah. but I want to do it throughout the day because, because Satan is not only busy at eight. Yeah, that's right. He's he going to show up at 945. Right. Uh -huh. So why is it so hard for us to do something so simple? Spending time in devotion daily with God, constantly during the day with God. I think one of the Reggie. things, Scott, is that we are, we are creatures of habit. You know, and we just haven't conditioned ourselves, you know, <clears throat> me personally, you know, now that my work situation has changed a lot, that's one of the things that uh, I'm trying to do more in my daily life now, as of now, you know, because now I, I hate to say it, but I have, I have time, I have time on my hand, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So uh, what better way to, to spend some of this time than, than with God? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. <laughs> Oh, uh, bro, bro, bro Scott. Scott. Go ahead. Don't Go ahead. Go ahead. I think that one of the reasons why we, why we make it so hard to do something so simple, I think because we really don't understand the ramifications, the impact, how crucial it is. I think if we know that we are, if some of us are leaders and all of us are leaders, one of the things that the adversary is going to do is try to attack our character. And mm -hmm. once your character has been diminished, it's hard to recruit some candidates for the past on your legacy because it's an integrity issue. The mm -hmm. devil, the enemy, he always pops up when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't spent any time with God, then you are going to be vulnerable to his attack. Take Joseph, for instance. When, when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, if he hadn't spent some time with God, he put, probably would have been a victim instead mm -hmm. of a victor. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the reasons why we make it so hard is we don't understand the ramifications of it. Okay. Thank you, Brother. Well, we're going we to get to, uh, uh, there's another uh, biblical example uh, of just what you uh, were talking about that we're going we're gonna to try to get to uh, uh, here in a couple of minutes. Brother Kimball, uh, I'm going to go to you and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. Okay, what I was going to say, uh, the brothers here, I don't think it is hard because uh, I can speak for myself. Uh, I know I spend a lot of time praying all day long in the morning, noon, day, and night. And I study the Bible and I, when it, when you, got it in your soul and your heart, it's not hard. Mm -hmm. And like uh, 2 Timothy uh, 2.15, you know, I, I live by that and I try to live by that. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it is hard for the brothers here. I can't speak for everyone, but I think it's easy for all the ones that's here to stay in the word of God all day long. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a bold statement, Brother Kimball. But uh, okay. okay. All right. Listen. Listen. Uh, we're gonna move on because I, I want to get through. I want to get through these these last two to get uh, to our to our next page. Um, the next one. Find friends who will hold you accountable. Somebody read what's underneath that for us. Find friends who ask hard questions about what you're doing and not doing. Be authentic. Cultivate trust in the relationship that allows you to share failures. Don't judge 
and you won't be judged. That's what Luke 6, 37 mm -hmm. says. Stay in contact and reach out when you need a reminder to stay strong. Okay. Th thank you, Pastor Washington. Uh, Bill McCart uh, McCartney, Bill McCartney, the founder of, of Promise Keepers, said that you need three types of people in your life. You need three types of people in your life. You need a Paul, a John Mark, and a Barnabas. A Paul, someone who is building in you. Now, we know Paul as the apostle of abnormal birth. It tells us that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 7, mm -hmm. who started churches. But Paul was not as interested in forming churches as he was in building Christ, oh. Christ in the lives as as many who would receive him. You need someone like Paul who's building in your life. Mm. You need a John Mark. You need a John Mark. <laughs> someone who can... Uh, someone you can help build into their life. We know that John Mark accompanied Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, mm -hmm. and he was believed to be a relative of Barnabas. And you also need a Barnabas, and that's where we are right here. Someone who doesn't care about who you are, but is willing to hold you accountable. Now, the Apostle Paul is credited for writing over half of the New Testament. And no other single figure can be identified as a bigger, bigger contributor to the spread of the gospel beyond the walls of Jerusalem. But it was Barnabas who brought Paul to the disciples and told them of Paul's Damascus Road experience when they were too afraid to have anything to do with them. It was also Barnabas it was also Barnabas who went down to Tarsus uh, to look for Paul, and he brought him back to Antioch to minister the words of the disciples called Christians first at Antioch. But also, remember this, before Paul said that John Mark was profitable for his ministry, Paul refused to take him along on their second missionary journey. They were planning Barnabas and Paul were planning a second missionary journey to visit the churches that they had established, had established. The dispute, the scripture says that the dispute between Barnabas and Paul became so great on whether to take John Mark or not. The scripture says they parted ways and you never hear from Barnabas again in scripture. But in the end, John Mark did become important to Paul's ministry. I said all that to say this. Barnabas, even though his name means the son of encouragement, and he was an encourager, he was not afraid to pa tell Paul what he believed, no matter what the circumstance was, hmm. or no matter what the consequences was. And my question is to you, why are we so reluctant to tell those we may come, we may be close to the truth? Why are we so reluctant to tell them the truth when we clearly see that they are wrong concerning an issue? In other words, why are we so reluctant to hold those close to us accountable? But Brother Scott, I think in this in, in this in this uh, opening topic, I think the key word there is friend, because yeah. a, a a real friend uh, has your best interests at heart, and they'd be willing to tell you the truth so they can lead you in the right direction. A lot of times we get friend mixed up with acquaintances, because mm -hmm. acquaintances will go along just to get along, but a friend is going if he's a real friend is going to tell you the the down hard truth because he wants to steer you in the right direction. And he has your best interest at heart. Hmm. Brother Teacher. Othello? Yeah, I was, I was going right alongside Brother Williams. I was going to say, uh, I was driving in home today. I was just thinking the same thing in terms of the Bible describes those that uh, hate your fellow man and say you love God. So we really may need to relook at this thing in terms of the associates we have, you know, in our in our circle. There are, there are people, people you speak with. There are people that you interact with. But uh, if we're really honest about it, or from my perspective, 
it's hard to find someone, as Brother Williams alluded to, to share those things with, things with to say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. And it may come across as uh, you may think you're sounding weak when you're really trying to get stronger. When you're seeing something in a brother to say, hey, I need some help. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times I've, I've met some young men, you know, at the church and, and on my job. And sometimes they, uh, they, uh, they tell me after the fact, you know, I can't help you when, uh, when the egg is already broken. Or I can't help you when the China is already broken, but uh, you would pray. My point is you would pray if you knew they were having a procedure, you would pray if you knew they were having a marriage trouble. And it's just such a facade, especially within the church that you have to be perfect. And we really need to be more, you know, accessible to each other. So. Mm -hmm. But I want us to, and I, I thank you, uh, Brother Williams and, uh, and, and Brother Isaac, but I want us to really be honest with ourselves. Uh, Brother Brown, I see you with your hand up. I want us to be really honest with ourselves because oftentimes we will value the friendship so much that we're afraid to tell them when we see that they're wrong. And again, uh, uh, if we're going to internalize, if we're going to centralize, we're going to cultivate integrity, we have to really find people who's going who to hold us accountable. Uh, Brother Johnson, Rev, uh, Irvin Johnson, and I, we've had this discussion many times, you know, holding certain people accountable. And it's not about friendship, oftentimes. I mean, it's good that you have the friendship, but you are, you are, you are a bigger friend if you can get past that and hold them accountable when you see that they're, they're going in the wrong way. Brother, Brother Brown, then we're going to have to move on because I, I, I'm trying my best to keep time today. Brother Brown. Just real quick, Brother Scott, the, the issue, I don't like holding people accountable because I don't want anybody to hold me accountable. If I tell you what's wrong, then you may actually tell me where I'm wrong. And I don't want you telling me where I'm wrong because I don't want to be held accountable. Therefore, I won't hold my friend accountable. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, you're right. And we don't want to risk, we don't want to risk losing or, or damaging the friendship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm drowning, a plank can save me, but eventually the plank is gonna go down with me. So you need something stronger than you to 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 save you if you're drowning, but it needs to be anchored. If not, it's gonna drift just like you are. And mm -hmm. and that's what we lack in our selection of friendship, what I which I think we're we're, we're centered around is we want someone who'll go with us on the, whatever the tide, but we need somebody who's anchored. And that's, right. that's hard, that's really hard. And two, sometimes, just real quick, that we can have only one of these folks in our lives at a time. Sometimes <laughs> we just can't handle all three at the same time, Brother Scott. I think, you know, we, we, we get so much mundane, <laughs> you know, the day to day, that, you know, like Brown said, we don't want somebody to tell us what to do and we don't want to spend time, we're trying to help somebody else. And, you know, we ain't got time to go let somebody build us up. You know, we can only do one thing at a time, so. I think it's a great point and uh, something that I personally need to work on having all three in my life at one time. I think mm -hmm. we all do that and benefit us. Yeah. Because again, that's what, that's, what, that's what Dr. Evans is encouraging us to do in order to cultivate integrity. We're going to have to find people. We're going to have to find friends who are going to hold us accountable. And we mm -hmm. can't be afraid to hold our friends accountable because we need to expect for them to do, uh, do the same because iron sharpens iron. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. Okay, all right. We're going to have to move on. We got to move on. The last one is major on God, not on your circumstance. Circumstances. Somebody read that, 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 what's underneath that for us. If Daniel had majored on his circumstances, he would have never have maintained his integrity. Again, let me read that again. If Daniel had majored on his circumstances, he would never have maintained his integrity. Mm -hmm. He would have compromised just like everybody else. He would no longer have been an extraordinary man who was living for God's purposes. God didn't save you so that you could become like everybody else. He saved you to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna cultivate integrity, you can't worry about what's going on around you. You you can't you can't you can't worry about everything that doesn't go your way. I'm going to say this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you a chance to, to comment too much on this section because I want to say this and I'm going to move on. Um, and I, I, I may have uh, expressed this to a group before, but if I did, just, just, just pardon me and bear with me. I consider myself an avid high school football fan. Okay. A while back, a, Toy a Toyota commercial 
that I saw during an NFL Sunday night football game caught my attention and it stayed on my mind ever since. Two high school football teams were competing in a hotly contested state championship game. It was rainy and wet and the score was 24-20 with the trailing team driving down the field with less than a minute left to go in the game. It just so happened that the quarterback and the wide receiver for the trailing team were bro brothers. They were not, not brothers, how they talk about being brothers, you know, in football, but they actually had the same, they actually had the same parents, okay? With no time left on the clock, the quarterback threw what appeared to be a game-winning touchdown to his brother, his actual physical brother, in the back corner of the end zone. However, the referee that was on that side and in a position to make a call ruled the catch was out of bounds. Game over. The team and the brothers and their parents are heartbroken. They've lost the game. They've lost the game. Now, during the drive home, the father and mom are in the front seat of the Toyota truck. And the two boys, the quarterback and the wide receiver, are in the back seat of the truck. And you could literally hear a pin drop in the truck. The father while driving, sees a man in a jacket parked along, park alongside of the road with his hood up, and his car appeared to have stalled out. It's raining. So the father pulled over to the side, and he asked the man, does he need a lift? The man emerges from underneath, underneath the hood and says, yes, I do. Thanks. The entire family immediately recognizes the man. It's the referee who made the <laughs> final call that cost their team the game. The father, Brother Dokes, the father turns to his son, his children, his sons, his children in the back seat who both have an uninviting, an uninviting look on their faces and says, guys, move over and make some room so we can let him in. Wow. <laughs> That's what he says. Brothers, here's my point and we're gonna move on. Your integrity is not about your circumstance or about the bad calls you think you've gotten in life. But at the end of the day, it's about doing what's right in the eyes of others so that your witness will be untainted and effective enough so that you can move over and make room to let someone else in. That's what that's all about. That's, what's all, that, that's what majoring on God and not your circumstance is all about. Like I said, I, I don't have time. I don't have time to even to, to, to get comments on that section because I'm, I'm so excited about uh, uh, getting to, to the next section. Our struggles are not concerning the word of God, but our walk with God. Our, our struggles are not concerning the word of God, but our, our walk with God. Yeah. But I wanna back up, I wanna back up just a minute, just a minute. Some of our greatest minds and most talented people in a normal environment, uh, when we're not in COVID, are sitting down in the pews of the church every Sunday morning. I don't think anybody will argue that, opi that, that opinion that some of our greatest minds and most talented people in a normal environment are sitting down in the pews of the church every Sunday morning. In most instances, we are some complex and often compli complicated people living a very simple faith. We are, we, we're, we're complex and complicated people, but the fact of the matter is we're living out a very simple faith. Our faith requires a faith march in which along the way, uh, uh, along the way, are not, there are not tough doctrin doctrinal issues that we have to deal with. What I mean by that is in, in our church and in our, in our walk with Christ, we don't strive 
with the infallibility. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't struggle with the infallibility of scripture. That's, that's, not, something, that's not something that we, we struggle with mo uh, mainly on the, on the, on the day, -to -day, day to day basis. Even though we're complex and complicated, again, our faith is simple. And, and most times we don't struggle with, with the infallibility of scripture. We hardly, if right. ever, debate the deity of Christ. We don't spend time stumbling over the virgin birth. You will no. hardly ever see someone walk away from the faith over the equality of the triune. We, we don't, 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 we don't concern ourselves uh, uh, very much with those things. Again, our struggles are not concerning the word of God, but our walk with God. Yeah. And oftentimes, the two things that are most disruptive to our walk and our integrities as keepers of the faith have to do with two things, romance and finance. I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> Oftentimes, the two things that are most dis disruptive to our walk and our integrity as keepers of the faith have to do with romance and finance. That's why to further this discussion on no more compromising our integrity, as we turn to page 82 in our book, Walking Securely, securely I want to look at the areas that causes us the most trouble with a secure walk. Romance or our relationships and finance. And finance, and finance. So let's let's get right at it. Let let's take finance first. I need someone to read the first two paragraphs on on page eighty two, and we're going to see how all this ties in. The first two paragraphs on page eighty two. Integrity is a critical issue today, in society where people feel they can't trust anyone anymore. Integrity is a very important subject. It's important for the business owner who's looking for employees who can he can trust. It's critical for the church that's looking for godly leaders that can follow. And it's vital for a generation of young men who need, who need role models who will lead them into lives of purposes, meaning, and impact. When we walk about it, when we, when we talk about integrity, we're talking about a person's trustworthiness the word integrity means complete or whole. It means that you say and what you mean are the same thing. It means when you make a promise, you keep it. It means when you say you'll do something, you do it. Okay, okay. I think you would agree, me, agree with me that one of the biggest problems we have in the church is ambition. One of the biggest problems we have in the church is ambition. Okay, if you're going to walk securely and not compromise your integrity, then your trustworthiness have to outweigh your ambitions. Mm. Brothers, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious, but our ambition can cause you to <laughs> compromise your integrity and make you lose your trustworthiness, especially when it comes to your finances. You don't have to take my word for it. Let's look at it in scripture. Before we get to Acts chapter 5, and that's where we're going, wow. that's where we're about to go, to Acts chapter 5, we see an infant church. Before we even get there, Pastor, we see an infant church in chapter 4 that has done some extraordinary, that has some extraordinary people demonstrating an amazing faith and doing some amazing things by the grace of God. In fact, no one claimed that any of his possessions wow. was his own but they shared everything that they had and it was common. It was not uncommon. In fact, it was common at the time in order to ensure that the needs of everyone was met, those who owned property would sell it and bring the money and place it at the, deposit, at the apostles' feet to distribute to those in need. In fact, we talked about Barnabas just a while ago. Uh, when we when we approach chapter five, that's where we're first introduced to Barnabas in Scripture, and we see him 
selling a field and, a, and placing the, the money at the apostles' feet, which was simply symbolic of, 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 of their approval and giving them authority over the money to be used as needed. So seeing what so, what, uh, uh, so many others were doing, alone comes Ananias and Sapphira with perhaps good intentions, but wrong motivation, ambition, which makes for a bad result, untrustworthy, a compromise of their integrity. So I want someone to read real quickly, uh, Acts chapter five, verses one through, two, uh, one through two, and then I have a question I wanna ask you. Acts chapter Acts five, five one and two. Got it. Okay, but a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart with lie, with, to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? I want to stop right there, Pastor, because I, I think we know the story, yes, and, and we know what happens to Ananias and, and Safari. Uh, uh, so I want to ask this question. I want to ask, ask this question. What was Ananias and Safari trying to gain? And I want you to really think about that. What were they trying to gain? Uh, they, were trying, they were trying to gain uh, an, an advantage on the, um, on, on the people around them. Hmm. Okay. Brother Spears, anybody else? Recognition. Yeah. Recognition. Brother Williams, re recognition. That's good. That's good. Yeah, they okay. want to be big ballers. They want, they, they want to be big ballers. Okay. Uh -huh. they, they were ambitious. Yeah. They, they were ambitious and, and they, they used their finances to be ambitious. Okay. Okay. Well, what should they have been trying to gain? What they should, should they have been, been trying, trying, to, trying to gain um, their their relationship with God? That's what they should have been trying to gain, and be like be like all the rest of the people and gave what they had because they had so much. Okay, brother Tate. Anybody else? What should they be trying? What should they, what should they have been trying to gain? It was a noble effort, but instead of them trying to meet the cause, they were trying to build. They were trying to do something for themselves rather than do something for the better of the community it was ambition in other mm -hmm. words versus them doing selfless acts and i, I, I oh, would say that um, perhaps Steve, they should have been trying to gain integrity they should have been trying to help somebody perhaps the they should have been trying to gain anything why do we money. need a game yeah why, why, why do we need a game if we're going to have integrity why, why do we need a game hmm. why does it have to be a gain a g-a-i-n a G -A -I -N? yeah brother robinson they should have kept their money. Nobody made them do it. They they gave it because they wanted to, but they didn't do it right. So you're right. They shouldn't have been trying to gain anything. If you're gonna do it, like like Charles Stanley say, do what is right and let God deal with the consequences. Yeah, right, right. Okay. So they well, did you bring something. me to my you bring me to my, my my next question. Were they wrong for holding back a portion of the money? No, they should have held back all of it. <laughs> I like that, brother. Owen. They were wrong. They were wrong they were for wrong. holding back. Okay, okay. Were, were, were they so? Were they wrong for holding back a portion of the money? Yes. 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 Because I, I, okay. I, I see. I see. I see. I see. A brother Gilmore saying no. <laughs> brother Gilmore. Well, Willis, Willis just answered that they didn't have to give anything in the beginning. <laughs> they don't owe them nothing. Do they owe it? So okay. if I don't owe anything, why do I have to pay it? Okay. Okay. But what what they did was they came and said, we're going to sell our property and give that to the poor. They they volunteered to do it. Okay. That's, That's the a choice. Thing. That yeah. was their choice. Yeah. They volunteered. And when you, when, if, if you're a person of integrity and you volunteer to say, okay, Brent, I'm going to give you $50. And then when I get to $50, like, well, you know, man, I can give you 30. I'll give you 30. That's not what, that's not what you agreed to do. Okay, I, 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 I want to answer to this question. I want an answer to this question. 
were they wrong for holding back a portion of the money? Yes. 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 I don't think so. If you're gonna, if you're gonna <laughs> give it, if you're gonna brother, give it, if you say you're gonna you do Darren something, Darren O'Neill, brothers, help us out, brother, help us out. Because I'm, I'm with you, brother. W w come on, tell me. Let me read something, brother Scott. Brother, I want to go to brother. Oh, I want to go to brother Darren O'Neill, brother Neil. O'Neill. <laughs> I, I don't think they were wrong for holding anything back. I think they were wrong for lying. Yeah, I said you could have given it and said, <laughs> "Hey, I kept this amount for myself, and this is what I'm giving you." Right, hey, brother, brother Scott. I like that, brother O'Neill. Okay, all right. Thank you, brother O'Neill. Brother Dokes, now you can go. <laughs> I, I'm going to read what just what O'Neill just said. Okay. Grace for while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was so, was it not in thy own power? Why had thou conceived this thing mm -hmm. in your heart? Thou had not lied unto men, <coughs> but unto God. All right, all right. I, I, okay, all right. Thank, thank you, brothers. Last question, then we got to move on. Were they living with integrity? No. 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 They've been hypocrites. They were hypocrites. Hmm. They compromised the integrity. Right. That's right. Yes. Because they were motivated what they thought their finances could do, but they weren't willing to part, really oh, part with right. 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 Scott. Right. Scott. Right. Mm -hmm. get the, get I think we have a good example right now with uh, what's going on with the uh, Supreme Court and Lindsey Graham and McConnell. Yeah, they right. say one thing. And yeah, then yeah. they do another. Uh, the same example. They've been exposed as hypocrites. I mean, say basically what it's saying is, yeah, say what you mean and 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 do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and that's 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 the integrity. All right. Thank thank you, brother John. All right. So uh, I'm 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 trying to figure out where I'm on where I'm on uh, where I'm on park <laughs> at because I got about five minutes left and a whole bunch left to say. Ananias and uh, 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 Sephiroth were trying to use their finances to falsify their faith. Yeah. It did nothing but demonstrate the deficiency in their integrity. That, that's all it did. They were trying to use the, their finances to fal falsify their faith, and it did nothing but demonstrate the deficiency in their integrity. If you're trying to walk securely in your faith, demonstrating integrity, you can't control your ambitions and you can't control your ambitions, then your ambitions will control you and cause you to compromise your integrity. Because like I said, ambition is one of the biggest problems that we have to deal with at the church. Brother Scott, can I please add a comment? Yes, sir. Okay, and, and, and this is the worst part of this. They could have been good all the days before, but the fact that they did this, it makes you back up and question everything about them. Mm -hmm. right. And that's what happens in society today is that the, like the cop who, who uh, shot up over there on Hardy, Hardy Road, uh, Hardy, uh, the Hardy issue. And then they, they threw all this, they went through all his cases after that. You know what yeah. I mean? Just the idea. So when you, when you show no integrity in an incident, it could surface a, a, an autopsy of your past. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes everything yeah. else questionable. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Patrick. Okay, go, go ahead, Brother Othello. Real quick, I just want to highlight what you mentioned about chapter four. It, it said they were of one, it said, neither now the multitude of those believe were one heart, one soul. Neither did anyone say that anything they possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. So they make an example of them because, like you said in the previous chapter, show, hey, there was only one accord, but now all of a sudden, you know, they're trying to do something for show. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Thank you. Okay, um, so. If your chief priority is make a name for yourself, then God has a way to make sure that your name will be remembered. But it may be the wrong way. It may be the yeah. wrong way. Our finances, if not kept under control, can be fatal to our faith and cause us to fall out of favor with God if we use them in a way that compromises our integrity. Like I said to begin, there were two areas I wanted to focus on, our finance, our finances. Romance and romances or relationships, okay? Yeah. Uh, relationships. So, so th that's the last area I wanted to look at, uh, relationships um, here tonight, but I got a lot and, and there's no way, I, I, if I get started, there's no way we're gonna be able to get through. But I, I wanna do this. Uh, I want you to do a couple of things for me for next week. 
and we're going to pass our promise. We're going to get through everything next week. Well, I, let, I want let, you to let me jump in right here. You got okay. 10 minutes tonight, but next week, that's all we're going to do. I, don't have, I won't have anything other than a light presentation, but other than that, you can take all you want next week, but you still got 10 minutes by my clock unless they're trying to get to the game or what. But Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. And I, I, I was normally thinking that I, 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 around 845, I need to hand it back over to you. But if you're going to give me 10 more minutes, then take God ten, bless you, take, brother. Take let's, 10 let's, minutes, let's sir. Keep on, yeah. Let's keep on rolling. All <laughs> right. So somebody, if you would, if somebody read for me, um, read for me the second paragraph on page 83, the second paragraph on where it says most men have mm -hmm. on page 83 and then the first paragraph on, eight, on page 84. Most men have compromised their integrity at some point. It may have been at a newsstand or at the gift shop at the airport. When you looked around and made sure no one was watching before you picked up a magazine. Or maybe you turned your phone, computer, or iPad to private browsing mode and hit the porn sites. After mm. all, who would ever know? Mm. Okay. Uh, and flip over to the first paragraph on page 84. Okay. What you do when no one is watching is who you are, what you do in secret, and what you may think you got away with will come out in God's economy because the spiritual principles in Proverbs 10, 9 has holds true. That's why honesty and repentance are key. Only those qualities can prevent the consequences of compromising your integrity. All right, brothers. We have to walk securely and not secretly. Mm -hmm. In other words, we can't be creeping. And, and that, that's, that's kind of where I want to I, 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 I be. Um, I want to start by asking you this question. When are we most vulnerable to compromise our integrity? Private. Privacy. When the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> mm. when, when we're alone, we're mm -hmm. awake. Okay, in our, in our private spaces, we're pressured. The opportunity is there. Brother Hall? Pressure. Mm. Mm. Wow, good answer. Just say that again. I, I didn't hear it. Pressure. Pressure. Mm -hmm. Pressure. Okay. Pressure. Okay. Pressure. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, brothers. Two of the companies that I'm highest on in terms of their investment appeal are in technology. Simply because of this. We live in a society where everybody wants to tell their business. Okay? We everybody <laughs> wants to tell their business. They want everybody to know what they're doing, when they're doing it, and who they are with. Hmm. They tell everything on social media. That's right. In fact, you can be working one job, post a picture of yourself working another job while at the first job, and don't see nothing wrong with it, not even concern about your boss seeing you that's at your first job. I, I just, I don't get how we want to use social media to put all our business out there. So the last thing any one of us should want is to, uh, to, 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 to post our private lives, our failures and faults out there for the entire world to see. All scripture is not only inspired and ordained by God, it's been finished, written mm -hmm. by God. I am forever grateful that God has finished writing scripture. <laughs> There's no person I know who would want to have his failures and his vices recorded for all generations to read and discuss and, and make movies about and write books on and preach sermons on through the centuries. Wow. No sin, save the sin of Adam and Eve, has received more press than the sin of David and Bathsheba. Mm. Movie makers have exploited the passage with their David and Bathsheba films 
portraying David as a man with some animal-like sex drive. Whether or not that's true or not, it's worth remembering that David was a man who loved God and he, he was still considered, like no other man in the Bible, a man after God's own heart. He sinned, but his sin was no greater than yours or mine. Hopefully, ours simply has not been recorded for all to read. I'm not defending it, but before we get started on focusing on this particular area of our study, I'm just trying to put it in proper perspective. The scripture says, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. With that being said, I want to take a, a look at the tragic failure of integrity in helping us walk securely and not secretly. Mm -hmm. Now, David, before we even get to scripture, now David was now about 50 years old, perhaps a few years older. He had been on the throne approximately 20 years. He had distinguished himself as a man of God, as a, a composer of the Psalms, as a faithful shepherd, as a valiant warrior on the uh, battlefield, and as a leader of his people. You would think at this stage in his life, he would be past some things. I mean, he had accomplished so much. He had, he had been through so much. And you would think at this stage in his life, there would be some things that he would just be past. Mm -hmm. However, no one is too young or ever uh, uh, too old to fall. You are never too young to fall and you are never too old to fall. Please take notice. David did not suddenly fall. By the time we get to where we're going to lay anchor, 2 Samuel chapter uh, 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 11, there's some kinks, some, some chinks in the armor that had already started to form. 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse number 13 tells us that meanwhile, David took some more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he had came from Hebron and more sons and daughters were born to David. The problem with this is there are at least three things that, the God, that God told the king of Israel not to do. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through 17, he says, you must not multiply your horses for himself or allow his people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. You must not multiply your wives for yourself, and you must not greatly increase silver and gold for himself. But why is this a problem for David? After all, uh, uh, everything is going right for him. He's a giant killer. Two decades of, of great leadership choice men in right places. Every military foe respects him. 60,000 miles of territory, no defeats in battle, financial help, and a beautiful new home and plans for a new temple. So what if he married a few more women and, and privately increased the number of concubines he had? Question is, if you're going to maintain your integrity, why does one day's decision really matter? Mm. Why, do, why does doing one thing on any given day matter mm. if you're going to maintain your integrity? We might have to stop there. We yeah. might have to stop there. Wow, wow, wow. Bro, Scott, what an amazing, amazing week. Again, we, we, we've been challenged all of us this whole month this topic is is searching and you ain't letting up it's like he putting his foot on the gas there for it <laughs> so thank you brother scott and i i i put i put good money on that that nobody is sharper than stephen scott when he's prepared himself nobody prepares harder so brother scott thank you for laboring for us this month uh we've really really been blessed and so next week uh we are going to have a an outside tailgating kind of event those of you who will come, I mean, I know some of you can't do it. I get that. But some who will, uh, we don't want to make preparations in vain. So let us know if you're going to make a chance. 
take a chance to come out and join us. So send me an email for that. So it's good to see so many of you. I'm going to ask Brother Dokes, Brother Dokes, make preparation. You're going to close us out in prayer if you don't mind. And I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a press uh, either Joe. Lucas, do you know the Kingdom Man's Oath? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're going to do our oath for us, okay? Before we close out, I did hear Darren. Darren, are you with us today? Yes, sir. Glad, glad uh, to have you, brother. Uh, Hello, Neil. Did you say something else? Okay. Thank you so much. Late, got out of work, buddy, but I'm here. No, I'm glad to hear your voice. Somebody else is here for the first time. I saw Kenneth's iPhone. Who is Kenneth? Can't hear you. That's one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kim? yeah. Yeah, I'm Mr. Kimball's uh, friend. Uh, I've been there several times. I've been out for a few weeks, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to become a regular as much as I possibly can. Hey, we appreciate you joining in tonight. Thank you for joining us. Anybody else here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? Okay. Well, okay. Well, hey, anyway, brothers, we welcome you all. Uh, we're going to send out information about what's happening next week. And again, thank you all for making the night special, Brother Scott and all of you all. Uh, at this time, we're in the hands of, do we have any special announcements? I actually last week to remember Brother, Brother Turner in your prayers. Uh, his sickness is progressing, so we want to remember him in prayer. But uh, uh, let's remember one another in prayer, all right? All right, Brother Dokes. Father God, our Father, Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ, we just want this once more again that you allowed us to gather us to get ourselves together in your name. Thank you for technology, dear God, because mm -hmm. without technology, we'd be just running around wrapping with our head up in the air. But thank you that you allowed us this chance to call upon your holy and righteous name. Yes. Dear God, I come praying for each and every man that sits under the sound of my weak voice. Yes. We're asking for mercy because mercy will truly suit our case. Yes. Thank you for men like Brother Scott and Brother Ware and Brother Johnson and Brother Reverend P Pastor Washington, dear God, who take the time out to study your word that they might assimilate the word that you would have us to hear. So mm -hmm. we pray, oh God, that you will let us hide your word within our heart that we may not sin against you. Help us to guide our integrity, dear God, that we might be the men you call us to be in these last and evil days. And allow us to continue praying that we might be what you would have us to be. Keep us on the right path, dear God, realizing that the pandemic is out there, but dear God, you told us to keep our hand clean and our heart pure, yes, yes. and we might not lift our souls into vanity and have sworn deceitfully. Mm -hmm. We too will receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of, God, of our salvation. Okay. Have mercy upon us, because yes. mercy truly, truly suits our king. Dear God, if now there was a time we need you, we need you, yeah. This world is going to hell in a handbag, but we need you. So the young men that you got bringing these lessons each week, dear God, I ask that you will continue guiding in mind that they think right, that tongue that they talk right, mm -hmm. that they love right. So please continue all in all our steps in your word, realizing that the steps of a good man is all about the law. That's right. Continue in all our steps in your word, that we yes. might walk worthy of the vocation where which we have been called. And we be so careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. We ask it all in Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Lucas. As a kingdom man, I stand. As, As a kingdom, kingdom man, man, I stand. stand. To acknowledge. To, to acknowledge, acknowledge. My position in Christ. My position in Christ. Christ. Place, in my my place in my home. My place in my home. home. My potential for service in my church. My potential for service, 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 service in my church. My, church. my purpose in the world. In my, my purpose, purpose in, the world. in the world. As a kingdom man, I stand. As, As a kingdom, kingdom man, man, I stand. stand. And to acknowledge. To acknowledge. To acknowledge my position in Christ. My, my position, position in Christ. Christ. My place in my home. My, my place in my home. my home. My potential for service in my church. My, 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 service in my, service in my church. My purpose in the world. And my, my purpose, purpose in the world. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you, Lucas. Y'all have a safe week, and hopefully, we'll be able to get together again real soon. Thank you guys so much. Right. Rem Wash. Thank y'all so much. Rem Wash. I'm here still, brother. Really 
is is coach on the line? Coach was. I think coach just put that sign up there. What sign was that? <laughs> with, with with a microphone. <laughs> coach. Coaching some way out of town or something, I guess. <laughs> we wanted to wish him wish him good uh blessings, I guess, for his, his upcoming marriage, huh? Yeah, he's almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Let that's him quit it. Hey, now that's a man with no integrity. Leave that microphone <laughs> up there. No, he ain't that. <laughs> 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 so wrong, so well, wrong. You should have told on him, Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, <laughs> you should have <laughs> told on him, man. <laughs> he was kind of, you should uh, do a screensaver. This is your last week at the top. <laughs>